This is MCAT, Missoula Community Access Television. But what do we really know about MCAT? Well, let's take a look. Oh, hey, Christian. Oh, oh, hey, Brent. Brent, how's it going? Not too bad. Awesome. Um, I'm making a little documentary oh, yeah. about MCAT, so... See, the camera's on. Y yeah, the camera's on. How's it going? It's not going too I'm bad. Stuck in the camera. Yeah, um, do you think oh. you could say a few things about MCAT? Yeah. Like how yeah. it works or whatever? Well, I don't work here, so... No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, um, MCAT. Um, this is our office in here. Um, and over here is our... I might have to talk a little louder because it's a little... We have like a, this big machine here. We have two channels. We have 7 and 11. 7 and 11 for those in California. Yeah. Okay, that was really lame. But anyways, yeah, we got 7 and 11. This is what's on our channel right now. It's really exciting stuff. Uh, people sitting and talking about things. Wow. Exciting. Um, our, our whole system here is automated. By It runs off a computer. And uh, back in the day, you'd see like a old switcher board, but now it's all digital. There's a digital switcher board in here where we can like switch things digitally to show on the channel. We can play videotape, um, DVDs, and um, we can even what's called MPEGing. Um, we can compress a video image into the hard drive and then play it out. So it's all there's no tape involved. It's all on a hard disk. And then, and I mentioned DVDs, we can play up to about, um, with, this is a total of both channels, about 602 DVDs, but not at the same time, people. Um, so, we have um, digital editing with Final Cut HD, and um, we have two of these computers, and producers can reserve time to go work on them after they reserve time on a hard drive and they can edit their movies and do all these cool effects. Yeah, so that's pretty much it around here. And hey guys. Yo man. Yo, what's up? Do you want a Wow. Hey, James Brown now, whoa. Hey, what's up? Hey, James Brown now, whoa. Good guy. Good guy, let me smile. Suck your seat. Yo, what are we looking at? I don't know, maybe Friday or something. Right. Or Thursday. Hey, Thursday. Hey. Um, 12 to 3? 9. How about 5 to 9? Sure. Okay, there you go. You're set. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. Uh, well, you guys have a good day then. Yeah. Hey, my friend. All right. And you too. All right. It's cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So this is where. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is uh, what we just did right now was um, uh, a checkout for a producer and a reservation. Um, they can reserve time in the edit suites to get up to like four hour blocks, which is pretty good. And then this is also the equipment room where we have all the cameras and stuff. All right, so right now we're um, setting up this guy, um, Montana. He's also a member of Movie Club, and we, we have a movie club here at MCAT. And uh, set him up on one of these uh, Firewire hard drives. Pretty cool, and that's what you reserve before you can get on our computers, or you can buy your own and bring them in and just work on our computers. We accept that. Now I'm just gonna have a moment of silence. Okay, and then you just hit now, and it's gonna open the separate window, mm -hmm. and right here it tells you capturing clip, so you know it's doing it. So it's doing that process of digitizing. And then when you captured enough footage um, from A to B or whatever, what you want to think of like is when you, whenever you're capturing, is you want to leave a little bit of tell. I mean, a little bit of head, a little bit of tell. Meaning, um, in footage terms, meaning like um, like um, slating it basically by keeping like a little bit of like say the person saying action or whatever at the beginning. All right, so now we're walking down the hall of shame, hall of fame. And we're getting set up in here in the cat box for the MCAT Board of Directors meeting. And this here is Joel Baird, the general manager. How do you do? 
And um, also in here we have our bulletin boards of news and stuff like that. And here's our bulletin board for Movie Club, which we meet every last Thursday of the month at 7.30 and talk movies and make movies. And we have a melted TV here. There's a melted TV on display just because it looks cool and stuff like that. And Joel, you know how this TV got melted. Yes. I'm not good at telling stories. About it's that. true. But this is a real melted TV. This is a real melted TV from my friend Deb. Deb was, as I've said before, a pretty inveterate smoker. Yes. She used to smoke all the time. Yes. And all her friends would come over to Deb's house on a Saturday night to get all smoked up before going out to bars. And Deb worked at the golf bag factory here in Missoula, where she wore this gas mask against terrible vapors. So her friends came over, and Deb had a great big green couch with a coffee table surrounded by cigarette butts. There were like four yucky gals, and they loved to talk and smoke. So they said, oh, we're pretty tired of talking, drinking, and smoking. Let's go out to talk and drink and smoke at a bar. And it was the Saturday before Easter Sunday. And they all went out to the press box just a few blocks away from Deb's house. And when she came back at closing time, she just walked. She was a very responsible alcoholic. And uh, she turned the corner of Central School, which is now the Children's Theater, and she looked at 225 Adams number four, apartment number four at the top. She said, oh my God, my house is on fire. And indeed, it was. And the fire had started from a cigarette smoldering in her couch. And her TV set was right across from it. It was all melted. That, that's cool. Mm, Deb lost work. a lot, and then she held a benefit for herself. And a lot of people thought that was kind of rude, so oh, they didn't they did. <laughs> she didn't make a lot of money. Uh -huh. But uh, one of the things she tried to do to recover was sell this TV set. Oh. I said, Deb, is anyone going to buy that TV set? And she said, oh, one of Roman's friends came over, and he offered me like $25 for it. And I said, are you kidding? And he must have been, because he just walked away. Oh. <laughs> and I asked her if I could have it, and she gave it to me. And you can see even the volume knobs, the fine tuning, were all melted on it. And so, there you have it, folks. The Melted TV. And we just have it on display. It looks pretty cool, though. We've used it also for our little, um, our viewer discretions, for those people that have like their movies and they think it's cool to say viewer discretion. We put this and it says viewer discretion on the screen and we make the TV actually look like it's running and working and stuff. And some people like that because it's cool because they have a rated, rated R movie or something. Okay, right now we're in the studio, our messy studio. And Brian here, he's a producer and he's filming some pictures he took. And um, it looks like with the robotic camera we have, there's a remote control in the main control room, which we'll go and I'll show you that. So he's setting up here in the studio, and as a producer, you have the, if after you've been trained in the studio, you can use it for like what he's doing, or even use this as to make a television show. We can even film live shows out of here. And also, um, there's a room, the cat box next door, um, that we film live shows in as well. Like um, we're doing our MCAT board of directors meeting tonight in there. And so we have blue screen for digital effects, um, for like, um, kind of like, the production, and then after you do your um, your post production, you can add in like backgrounds and stuff digitally. Right now, our producer is using this room as a, like a little mini studio, plus an old school editor machine we have. It's a tape to tape deck editing machine, and it's old school. It only has digital effects and digital titles, and that's it. But it stays all analog. It's like old school, like 80s editing, early 90s, late 90s. 2000. And here we have like all our cables, like everything. We have like weird adapter cables to like S video, to microphone cables, to extension cords, to vacuum cleaners, to mops, to vacuum cleaners, to mops and brooms. So, anyways, uh, this is outside of MCAT. Um, you see, this is the old Missoulian building. Why we have the ramp still here is where the trucks would come pick up the papers to send them out. But now it's not MCAT, so this is our front door basically, or front doors. And then that double door right there is um, to the studio so people can bring in their props and stuff like that. And then this whole, we have our, our canopy that says uh, MCAT on it. And then we share the, this is the Circle Square building, and we share it with many other offices. Um, and other uh, people in the building, but we have, we're pretty much the 
the bottom corner of the basement of the building. Also get in through these doors. Sometimes this door might be locked, but I'll, I have a key. But normally it's unlocked, so people can get in on this. This is the Higgins side. Um, there's all the other offices that um, share the facility, and everything's like everything's automated in this building. Um, and we have our bathrooms here, and um, everything like has a like, code and stuff. Huh? So you said I'm an idiot? Huh? You oh, said God. I'm an idiot? Oh, God. Oh, dude, are you riding it? What the hell was? Who, I didn't see who was that guy? An idiot. I don't know what that was. I don't know. Oh. Oh. Well. What you've just seen is a dramatization of what could and does happen every day. Every day, without warning. Dozens of hardworking American men and women are attacked in their workplaces by big blonde guys. If you would like to assist the families of victims of big blonde guys, please call the number on the bottom of the screen. Because every C note ensures a safer and happier tomorrow.